Hi guys and welcome back to VR Essentials where we talk about the practical uses of virtual reality and everything about the metaverse of course. Today very exciting video, in fact it's going to be more of a part series so let's just call it part one where we're going to be using the Pico Neo 3 link and testing it out based on one of the comments that was left by you guys. Thank you very, very much. And a big shout out to the person who did leave that comment, who wanted to know a little bit more what it's like to use the Pico Neo 3 Link with simulators, especially with, let's say, flights or with car driving and all these kind of different things. Now, at the moment, I have more car sims than I do plane sims. So I'm going to start off with car sims to begin with. And of course, we're going to be using the G923 G-Force by Logitech. Thank you very much, Logitech, for sending me this. And I should have done longer hoodie videos about it. So we're going to start off using Automobilista 2 with this. I'm going to show you what it feels like using it with VR. So for those who are curious about VR, I want to know really the difference between what it's like to use VR car sims and just to drive and you have a monitor in front of you. What, it, what is the difference? Like why, why would the Pico Neo 3 Link or any VR headset provide additional value, additional enhancement in your experience as to what it's like to be in the actual car. The other thing is I'm going to show you also the various different graphic settings that I use for this actual car sims as well. So I will show this to you at the end of this video. And do remember that upon hitting the 11,000 subscribers, we are going to be doing a really cool giveaway, guys. A brand new HP Reverb G2 with the cyber shoes as well as the game station, the chair, everything that goes with it. And also a third winner will walk away with a voucher worth 50 US dollars, which you can redeem against any game that you want in the Pico Interactive Link store or the MetaQuest store or also Steam VR or even the HTC Vive store. So it'd be completely up to you as to how you want to spend that money. But yeah, guys, let's hop. Let me put on the Pico Neo 3 link first. Let's hop into VR. Then I'm going to talk on top of the images because it was a little bit hard for me to talk at the same time as driving. Now, the one thing that for me is very different in terms of experience using the Pico Neo 3 link compared to, let's say, the HP Reverb G2 is that I'm not able to access my desktop apps via my Pico Neo 3 Link with the DP cable. Um, and that to me can be a little bit annoying. For example, if I want to close a window, I don't want to take off my headset and I just want to access basically the actual, um, you know, the actual PC, like the actual software system. And I don't want to take the headset off. I can't do that. So here I would say that the HP Reverb G2 really does provide more flexibility in terms of navigation compared to the Pico Neo 3 Link, whether it's wirelessly streaming or, you know, using the DP4K cable. So I think Pico could definitely, now of course this could come in an update software, it's not a big issue, but I think this is something that, you know, perhaps Pico or ByteDance would want to work on in the future to just make it a little bit easier for us when we're inside of VR in terms of navigating with our PC VR system. So we can actually click open windows, stop something, play, or whatever it might be, that'll be really a good bonus. So that, first of all, is one of the things I have noticed that, you know, isn't great. The other thing that I've noticed is that, now this could be an Autobobilista problem, um, but again, when I'm inside of the HP Reverb G2, so basically there's an option inside of Automobilista which enables you to make sure that when you start a race, you're always uh, positioned in front of your car. But I found that using the HP Reverb G2, that doesn't actually work. But the difference is that when I'm with the HP Reverb G2, I'm able to very fast um, recenter myself just by pressing a button that is on either controller to be able to access the Steam VR panel. However, on the Pico Neo 3 Link, the problem is that I have to use the left controller, then press the button, and then basically reset myself. <laughs> Problematic, so let me just uh, recenter. All right, that's better. Now, unfortunately, all the cars have gone already, so that's not very good. And it's very hard to do that when the game's already started. So, when the game's already started, I'm really not positioned properly. And when I'm trying to start a race, the car's already gone basically because the clock is going to start 
pretty much there and then. But with the HP Reverb D2, I can pretty much touch any button. I don't have to think about what button to press. I can just pause the game straight away, then recenter, and then boom, I can then you know start the game at least with everyone um, as everyone is going. So that's also one of the differences in terms of gameplay that I find that offers more flexibility on the HP Reverb D2 side compared to, let's say, the Pico Neo 3 Link with the DP4K cable. Uh, and I will give you more of my feedback using the wireless streaming. So do hit the notification bell after you subscribe for more details about that specific aspect of the game. Now, the other thing is when you actually are playing the game, now the graphics, I must admit, now you can take off uh, vertical sync. It is, in fact, advised to switch off V-Sync so you don't have any lines or specific jaggedness uh, whilst you're playing. But, um, you know, it, it, it was actually really good. Like the graphics were very clear, very clear. Um, the, the immer it just feels so much immersed in there um, that it really made me feel like I was in the car itself. Now, especially when I'm wearing these headphones and not using the audio from the actual Pico Neo 3 Link itself. Now, the audio from the Pico Neo 3 Link is good enough. It's perfectly fine. Um, and these, but these things here will also fit under the headset, which I think is very important. Um, the actual strap will not go underneath. So there's not going to be no obstruction there. But I have to say that when I wear my these kind of headphones on, um, you know, it is it just creates so much more immersion inside. Uh, it's just really fantastic. And I can really tell when the corners are coming. So I'm able to break earlier. Um, now, I'm not a professional racing driver by all means. I haven't clocked in hundreds of hours into this thing. Uh, you know, I've clocked in, I think, almost 30 or 50 hours or something along the way. But I have to admit that the comfort inside, especially when your headset starts to take the shape of your face, I really do like the fact that the facial interface now, after clocking in almost 100 hours, is starting to take the shape of my face. And that is making my experience in VR much, much, much more comfortable compared to when I did the previous video, which you can go and check out, which was about 25 hours or 30 hours inside of VR. So go and check out that video. I really do highly advise it. Now, when you're playing with the sim, I haven't found that, as you saw, I was in the dark at night time, but I have a lot of lights around me. Um, I haven't lost the tracking whatsoever. I do, however, re recommend that when you have your controllers, that you put them close to you, because if you're gonna put all to disable your boundary altogether, because if you're gonna put them away from you, what's gonna happen is your boundary is actually gonna start to uh, come on and you're gonna see your boundary. So that can be a little bit annoying. So do make sure to have your controllers next to you. Um, the other thing that I can say to you is that the G9, uh, the, G20, the G923, um, was absolutely amazing. I mean, it was very responsive. It really made me feel the Pico Neo 3 Link that I was in VR, in the car, driving a real Formula One uh, car. I mean, I can't wait for F1 2022 to come out. Uh, it be very interesting to see the differences with Automobilista 2, of course. Um, but it really gave me the impression that I was inside of the car, racing a racing car. It's just like so pumpy and you really feel your heart rate going when you're going faster and, and all the other cars are going so much faster than me. So it just goes to show that, you know, um, um, it, it's also, it's almost going too fast for me in a way. Um, so no, it's just really amazing. I have to say that when I'm in VR with the G923, uh, I get very, um, you know, like, like, especially when I'm having an accident or something, I had the camera actually fall at some stage because I basically, uh, shook my my wheel like I really felt it was in the accident so I shook the wheel and the whole desk shook and the camera fell and 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 my screen just moved all over the place and it was really funny because I thought oh is it the G923 that just vibrates too much or is it really me that 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 had the sensation of crashing and it turns out it was me because when I looked at the footage again um, and then when I was and then we could talk about this now uh, the difference is that when you're you know when you're playing without the VR headset on. I definitely feel a lot of disconnect. I don't feel like I'm inside of the car itself, even though the, the actual headset provides me the immersion that I need to feel like I'm driving. And of course, the G923 also makes me feel like I'm driving. I mean, the gears are super responsive. Um, the, 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 the pedals are very responsive. The braking is very responsive. Now, I don't have the best setup. As you can see, it's a very basic setup. My G923 is just on my desk and I have literally the pedals on the floor. So it's, it's a very, very basic setup. However, it does provide me the immersion I need to feel like I'm in the car. But when I wear the Pico Neo 3 Link, oh my God, it is 
absolutely amazing. The other difference that I feel between not wearing the Pico Nuit 3 Link or being in VR and just playing with the screen next to me, uh, in front of me, is that I don't actually see like where the corners are going to be. So it's much more difficult for me to judge where a corner is coming compared to when I'm in VR. I exactly know where the car is coming, um, you know, and I can judge my corners much faster. I can judge where the cars are next to me, behind me, and when the corner is coming. Sorry, that was what I was trying to say just now. However, with the Pico Neo 3 Link, I, and I'll close on this, uh, with the difference with the, the, you know, with the Pico Neo 3 Link and the, the HP Reverb G2, is that the car, the wheels, some aspects of the car feel a little bit overblown. So I do talk about this a little bit in the previous video. So do go and check out the video. I really do advise you go and check out the video and do hit the notification bell after you subscribe, as I mentioned, because I will touch on this again in the future. So you'll be notified. Um, but yeah, I do feel that some aspects of the car sometimes are a little bit bigger than what they should be compared to the HP Reverb G2. So perhaps the developers should start to approach Pico now to tweak their games a little bit more so everything is a bit more proportionate. And also Pico, I do advise that you approach all these developers as well. So, you know, you can let them know that you're around, you exist, and your headset's gonna be fantastic and very successful. So, you know, they can then start to amend their games accordingly because the wheel, for example, the actual wheels of the car, not, not the steering wheel, the actual wheels of the car do feel a little bit big. The steering wheel in the game feels a little bit big. Just everything feels a little bit bigger than what it's supposed to be, but it doesn't feel so big to the point that it disturbs me. It just feels that, yeah, it is. It is, it is, it is a little bit dis disproportionate, excuse me, compared to the HP Reverb G2. All right, guys, let's get out of VR now, and I'm gonna give you my final thoughts. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna show you the actual graphic settings that I used with the Pico Neo 3 itself, so you understand, you know, just bear in mind that I had OBS opened and my camera software open, plus the uh, G923 software open and everything else. Um, so, and as I mentioned, if you want me to do a specific video in terms of how to set this up, please let me know by all means, and I will do, you know, another video like that as well. So let me go to performance. So, uh, resolution here is 1920 by 1080. I have window, so it's easier to navigate, uh, when I want to get out of VR. Texture resolution is on high, anisotropic, uh, anisotropic, sorry, is on 4X. V-Sync is yes, although to be honest with you, you could turn it off if you feel that you have too many uh, lines that occur or jitter or things like that, just switch it off. Uh, normally it is recommended to, in fact, s switch it off, but I didn't have any problems with it switched on. Um, and then the multi-sampling, I put it on medium. And reflexes, reflections is not really important, so I generally put these on low. Environmental map, normally I do try to put it on high, but for this time round, on medium was perfectly acceptable. Car detail, medium, perfectly acceptable. Track detail, medium as well. Picry detail, player only, to keep that extra oomph and graphics. Shadow detail, medium, you don't really need that many. Enhanced mirror, no, generally I don't really put it on enhanced because it's gonna eat up some of my graphics. Um, and then if I try to go down, let me try to go down, see if I can do it. Uh, my wheel's not, unfortunately, allowing me to go down. Give me a second. All right, there we go. Um, so, uh, car details, I said, yeah, so in house mirror, no motion blur, definitely off. I don't want to have motion sickness. And render frames ahead, normally I put two detailed grass. Now, normally I would put detailed grass on medium, to be honest with you, uh, but you can also put it on low if you want to, especially if your machine can't really handle it. All right, um, so let me just get out of here now. All right, so before I give you my final thoughts of everything, let's just get some shout outs to you guys because you are freaking awesome. And let's read some of your comments and welcome also some of the new subscribers. All right, so let me go to see you all here. Let me just make it a bit bigger so you can actually see. I'd like to welcome Split Race. Uh, also, this young person here, I'm not quite sure how to say your name. Kill Assist, NZ News, Emma's Dad, Nutty, His Spawn World, Alta Theoretical, too lazy to edit, ha, huh, yeah, awesome name. Arindu Basu, let's go to date subscribed as well. I'd like to welcome Lyndon Telsford, Count Lazard, Mark Stewart, Monaco France, oh, awesome, thanks for joining. Tunudo, JV, Ralph Munition, Sky Cobra, Alumas, and David Guber. Thank you very much, guys, for joining the channel. You guys are 
frigging awesome because I know how long, how much it takes to press the subscribe button. It's like as if it was so far away. It's like it's actually really hard. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And you are also going to be put inside of, of course, the potential winning of the HP Reverb G2, the Cyber Shoes, and also the voucher. Although you do have to share some videos. So do go to the link in the description below to enter for that awesome competition, which is going to end and the winners will be announced very soon upon hitting the 11,000 subscribers, guys. All right, so my final thoughts in terms of the Pico Neo 3 link using this. Now, I'm gonna do a separate video where I'm not gonna be using the DP cable. Where I'm not gonna be using the DP cable. Are there gonna be some real differences? Can we even use the G923 wheel with wireless streaming to the PC? Hmm. Those are the kind of questions that I really want to start to answer. And also, what are the graphics? How are they going to compare to the actual game using the 4K DP cable? Because using the 4K DP cable is really, really not bad. Very good experience. I definitely, definitely, if you want to play Automobile Lester 2, then I definitely do recommend the Pico Neo 3 Link, especially if you're someone who has never, ever used PC VR before of any kind, you're gonna love this experience. However, do go and check out one of the, previ the previous video, in fact, because I do talk about the fact that some games are not compatible with the Pico Neo 3 Link. So do go and check that video out for more insights there and do hit the notification bell after you subscribe as I will actually be listing all the games that are not compatible with the Pico Neo 3 Link DP cable, guys. So. Do hang around for that video. And as I said, if you want me to do a video about how to set this up, how to configure it for Ultimobilista 2, let me know. Be very happy to do that video. All right, guys, until next time, take it easy, and I'll see you in more videos probably this weekend. So hit that notification bell to be notified. Bye, guys. Take it easy.